This Christmas, I'm returning to my roots, my summertime roots, and talking about iCarly just a little bit more and probably for my final time, until season two of The Revival comes back on, which is looking closer and closer each day to happening soon. My guess is pretty early on next year, but it just seems wrong this fringe miss without at least taking a trip back to the world of iCarly for the show's Christmas special, I Christmas. So welcome back or hello for the first time to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where I cover something interesting, nostalgic, or holiday related every day from the 1st of December to the 25th in order to find that holiday spirit I lost nearly a decade ago. So if you want to be a part of this daily journey and help me find that good old jolly joy, subscribe and come aboard. The episode starts with the Christmas special web show. It's not very special overall as it's just the tail end of the show like usual. Carly and Sam are in an inflatable raft for some reason and Freddy is dressed like a flashlight. The most festive of things, clearly. Ugh. Poor Freddy, man stays never catching any Ws. Spencer downstairs has set up this year's Christmas tree, except it's not. It's a trash mist tree that contains a dangerous electromagnet on the inside, so you can hang things like your car keys on it. Carly isn't particularly happy about this. All she wanted this year was a real tree for things to feel like normal just for once. Freddy's mom comes over to embarrass him about going to the mall to see Santa. Sam, however, now has to head home to go bond with her mom by beating up their old TV with a baseball bat, leaving Carly and Spencer to themselves and their new metal tree. In the middle of the night, though, the fire alarm goes off, waking up Spencer in a panic, smacking into the door before running out to see the tree has caught on fire. While trying to put it out, Carly comes running running downstairs to then turn off the fire alarm with a pineapple? When it's still going off after that, she runs over to the fridge to drop off the now fallen alarm into a pitcher of lemonade, and thus it short circuits. But the battery was right there, just rip it out! Who cares, uh, sitcom characters never listen to Logic. Hey man, why can't they listen to my music? No, I wasn't talking about you, Logic. When the fire gets put out, the presents that were under the tree were burnt to a crisp. Carly immediately becomes irate with a mixture of the said effort and money she put into the gifts and Spencer's unwillingness to just get a regular tree this year. She yells at him, telling him that she wishes he was born normal, and storms off. Upstairs now in the studio, Carly, pacing around in anger and sadness, gets a surprise magical visit from Mitch, who just appears in her room and is her Christmas angel. Where's my Christmas angel? Hey man, I'll be your Christmas angel. Hey, thanks, Logic. Coming up on Nick, it's iCarly. Now here's more iCarly. Proving that he is magic, he performs a card trick which, aside from guessing the card right, has a this nightmare fuel on it. He's really an angel. Thanks for that, iCarly. I'll bill you for my therapy. He's actually there to make her wish come true, make Spencer born normal. Carly is still in shock of what's happening, and even after all the weird stuff, still doesn't fully believe what's going on. When going downstairs, it's now the morning, the apartment is different. Everything is normal. Well, normal in comparison from all the art projects that used to litter the apartment. Spencer is seen in a suit and on a business call. Oh, and he's dating Freddy's mom, so there's a... There's that. Also, the candor in which Spencer is speaking here, trying to sound more proper and enunciate his words is so perfect. Again, I've said this many times before, but we just don't deserve Jerry Trainer. He's too pure for this world. Now at school, Mitch appears once more explaining her relationships with everyone. We see Freddy, who has given up on his conquest to date Carly, as well his mother is dating Carly's brother, and he also has a mean girlfriend who no one likes. Rona Berger. Man, that's a great name. Also, she finally has her own boyfriend, and you won't believe who it is. It's... Neville! So I guess she uh, she finally rued the day, huh? So now Carly screams into commercial break, much like Jimmy Neutron when he found out his future self married Cindy. I won't do the same joke again like in my Jimmy Neutron video, but I thought about it. Anyway, back at the apartment now, the iCarly studio is just storage. iCarly never became a thing in the first place now. Carly just wants everything to go back to the way it was because this is all so weird. But of course, she hasn't fully learned the reasoning of why this life isn't special like her life before. And until then, Mitch can't earn his wings meaning he can't revert the wish. We then find out what happened to Sam. She's... well, she's in juvie. They never were able to become friends growing up because Spencer didn't approve of them hanging out. You know, he's all proper now. She visits Sam at juvie and tries to convince her that they were friends, and she knows everything about her. First, freaking her out, and then slightly convincing her a bit. Not like anything really comes of that, but at least Sam kind of believes her now, so there's that as well. The guard, though, I recognize from the show Glee. Not an important detail at all, but one that I want to go all Leo pointing at the screen on. Back at the apartment, we see everyone over there, minus Carly, and once she walks in, Spencer and Freddy's mom announce that 
they are getting married. Carly has a full-on breakdown regretting everything she wished for and yells at everyone, roasting the ever-loving crap out of them, even more so Neville and the Burger Girl, before running upstairs crying, looking for Mitch to reverse everything and saying that she's learned her lesson. But Mitch doesn't show up the wish is still in effect. Carly falls to the floor crying right outside of the studio. But just when all hope is lost, a light from outside shines in and thanks to the magical noise cues, maybe something has changed. The regular Freddy comes to see Carly mentioning some ideas for iCarly, which sparks her to realize that she's back to her original life, being thankful to see the studio and see Freddy and Sam. She runs downstairs to hug Spencer and stops him from throwing out the burnt metal tree, as it is now her favorite Christmas tree ever. They all together start putting stuff on on the tree to decorate it and Mitch appears on a laptop screen. Carly goes over to it to see that he has earned his wings. Chicken wings. Lucky. Also, no one's the wiser to Carly just speaking to a Christmas angel through a laptop five feet away. Regardless, they start awkwardly caroling at the tree all while trying to not break character as it just goes on for so long that it even continues into the show's credits. And Carly never said sorry to Spencer for saying what she said in the first place, which felt a bit odd. Like, sure, she said it without saying it, but I feel just telling Spencer sorry for saying what she said would have been nice. But hey, I'm just a dude on the internet. The weirdness of her life is what makes it special, what makes it her normal. Yeah, her brother isn't perfect, sometimes at the detriment to herself, but it's what makes it unique and exciting. That normalcy in which you think is considered normal may not be your normal. Speaking of normal, this episode gets unnormal. Taking a spin at the wishing you were never born trope and seeing life in a new or different perspective, which proves to always be effective in the end. The thing you think you seek is not the thing you think it is. Adding this whole mystical element to the show, meaning that in the world of iCarly, Christmas angels exist and magic is real. Or maybe Carly had too much eggnog. <laughs> Why I do enjoy this episode is because it's another story that happens around and on Christmas, but it isn't really about Christmas. It's about character and finding the joy with what you have in your life. Relating to it, sure, I don't have a hyper-creative older brother I only live with who I wish would sometimes be normal, but I can relate to taking things for granted and wishing for my life to be different, sometimes with people and sometimes with life situations. Seeing what others have and how much they got on their plate versus mine. It's easy to get caught up in those things, and over the past few years specifically is something I had to deal with getting over and finding myself, finding the love for me, who I am and what I am fortunate enough today to have. Many years were spent in a dark place, and I'd be lying if I hadn't been there throughout my own journey here now again. But trying to find that peace with myself has been the real reward. The journey isn't over per se, but I am grateful for a lot in my life. Finally being around the right people in my life, doing and creating the things that make me happy and that I enjoy joy, disconnecting more from the internet and taking in life as it is. I'm not here to preach to you what to do, just sharing my own personal thoughts and feelings. Everyone's different, and what helps me may not be what you may be needing or searching for. All I can say is thank you for being with me throughout this creative outlet. I love being able to discuss my interests and see others online share their love or thoughts on it as well. Much like Spencer, I'm not perfect. Heck, I mispronounce things all the time thanks to how my brain sees words sometimes jumbling them up mixing that in with my ADHD. But at least I can finally say that I feel like me. I am who I am, take it or leave it. I don't mean to get so personal about it all, but this fringe journey to find this missing joy isn't about, oh, it's the holidays, I need to be cheery. It's about finding that peace with this time of the year that has utterly been ruined year after year for so long. From different jobs like retail and the food industry, to people who were close to me who have made it miserable. This episode of iCarly reminds me of what matters in life 
and that I shouldn't take what I care about for granted. A reminder that seems like something one shouldn't need, but it helps reinforce a better mindset when thinking that way. Aside from the mystical element of this episode, it really isn't too special from any other iCarly episode. It's definitely not one of my favorites, but it's a nice revisit that does bring me joy ultimately. But what about you? How do you feel about this episode of iCarly? Let me know. I am very thankful for you all watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, please. I'll see you tomorrow with another video for my next day of Fringemas. Check out the playlist to keep up with the month, but until then, later.